Good evening and welcome to Cafe Lena. Thanks for watching this live stream production from Saratoga Springs, New York. These live streams are made possible by the generous support of the Sarah B. Folk Charitable Fund and by our community of subscribers. Special thanks to our virtuoso level subscribers and lifetime Cafe Lena members. By buying a ticket for this performance, you're supporting independent music and the mission of our historic nonprofit venue. Enjoy your front row seats for this show live from Cafe Lena. everybody. Wow, I, I think it's almost as much of a show out there as it's going to be up here. It's so beautiful to see all of you. It feels a little bit like time traveling to have this group in the room. And, uh, you know, this represents just decades and decades of friendships. And, uh, and on this evening, every single one of those friendships connects through the person who's going to be standing on this stage. Yes. I think if you just take a moment to think about the number of sparks that he has, he has lighted in musicians um, and the number of bands that he has been part of, where he heard something in that band leader and he just made it come alive and, uh, and rise to the next level. And uh, so it's a lifetime spent making other people shine. And tonight, Peter shines. Please give him a huge welcome, Peter Davis. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you and good night. My manager over here, Paul Rosenberg, <laughs> told me that um, Shy Baldwin's manager told him not to stay in the green room. And so I was out here mingling with the people because he told me to do it. <laughs> OK, see if you, you guys know this one. Sing, sing that. Let's keep going. So, yeah, so that one is a little bit, it's like beauty would, beauty could you, would you, should you be mine. Okay, let's try to start over. Sing anything. One, two, three. It's a neighborly day for a beauty wood, a beautiful way for a neighbor. Should you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted. I have always wanted to be a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to be in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day when we're together. Won't you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Now milk this part. Won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my neighbor? Very good. There's a certain amount of songs I'm going to do tonight that I've always wanted to play with people <clears throat> in bands, and they have always vetoed them, you know, in band. <laughs> in a band, there's veto power. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm, and tonight I can do anything I want. So part of this is going to be songs like that, songs that I've kind of always wanted to play and, and haven't played. And um, some stories about my life in music, what happened to me growing up, how did I get to this place that I am right now. And it started when, um, when I was a baby. I was... <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was a baby, I was one of those kids that could sing before they could talk or walk. Um, and um, the only records that my parents played in the house, and this was at the very beginning of 33 records. My dad got a hi-fi with, with long playing records. The only records they played was opera music. And um, the story of my, my toddlerhood was that my dad was a dentist in the army in World War II. And in 19, early 1945, my mother took a train trip from Long Island to Chicago, where he was fixing people's teeth before he, they went overseas. And um, I was entertaining the people in the train car <laughs> by singing certain opera arias <laughs> at you know age one and a half or something like that. <clears throat> So um, I, I remember, I remember the, the, the tune, uh, one of them, and so I'd like to do it for you here tonight. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't remember the words, but... Uh, 
And um, I did sing it on the phone two nights ago to my 90-year-old cousin, Ronald B. Davis in Orono, Maine, to find out which uh, opera this came from. And he actually came up with it. Thank you, Ronald. He's watching tonight. Um, it's the quartet from Rigoletto. Yes. But, oh, good. And, so I want you to sing it with me. I'll teach it to you. It goes like this. La, 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 la. Sing that. La 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 Okay, let's sing it all together. And now, if, if, if you want to, let a bit of opera come into you. Take a deep breath. And let's, like, you know, don't worry about the other people hearing you. You know, I can tell it's a very shy audience. Here we go. La 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 la. Ready to go. La 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 Thank you and Thank you, Giuseppe Verdi. <laughs> so um, after that, you know, my parents knew that I was some kind of a musical child. And uh, they gave me piano lessons when I was five. And um, I was pretty good at it, but after six months, the teacher fired me. <laughs> Why? Because I wasn't reading the notes. I was playing this playing by ear. And then I had a series of other lessons. The, I took accordion lessons for two weeks, but I didn't like how the teacher's house smelled. <laughs> I took violin lessons for, you know, a little while, but I couldn't get anything out of it, like, right away. And um, finally, I was handed a clarinet in um, fourth grade, and I stuck with that for quite a while. I ended up playing the Mozart clarinet concerto, not with an orchestra. Anyway, um, in ninth grade, Mr. Singer, the... Um, band teacher handed me a saxophone and showed me the blues scale. And sometime during that year, some 18-year-old guys invited me to be in their band, Richie and the Debonairs <laughs> is the name of it. And um, I'm going to play for you the first song that I ever played in a band. It's by Larry Williams, the great um, New Orleans uh, composer and singer, a guy that wrote a lot of Richard, um, Little Richard's hits and had his own hits. But it has uh, a riff, and I want you to learn the riff because um, I had to play the riff part on the saxophone, and tonight I'm not going to do that. So it is really the blues scale, and it, the riff sounds like this. Da, 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 da. Which is to the four chord. It actually goes up. And then at the end it goes, I, I love her, she loves me. Oh, 
know how happy now we can be making love underneath the apple tree. Then the riff. Okay, here we go. First song I ever played in the band, Richie and the Debonairs, are good singers and you're not shy. So um, during that ninth grade year, I started playing in bars with the older guys. And my life has been shaped in so many different ways, lots of twists and turns the vicissitudes of, what's a good word? The vicissitudes of Peter. <laughs> so what happened is, in September of that year, they sent me to Quaker boarding school and um, in Poughkeepsie, New York, Oakwood School, which is the um, oldest coeducational boarding school in uh, North America. And they didn't have really a music program, but um, I soon met a, uh, a girl who um, was good friends with the Baez family. And um, also, um, the closest thing to a music teacher we had was some tall, skinny guy who, because he was banned by the HUAC committee, uh, he was blacklisted. He happened to live near Poughkeepsie. 
And this guy used to come a lot to our school and sit on the floor and play the banjo with us. You can guess who that is. Pete, Pete Seeger. Yes. Um, so um, I guess I should play the banjo. Uh, and um, I had a request for this tune. Uh, I know every song ever written, except for six. Mm -hmm. So this is a song that I learned. Um, it's got a chorus. And since I have some of my grandkids here tonight, this song is called, I'm My Own Grandpa. <laughs> you have to listen to the words now to get it. Oh, many, many years ago, when I was 23, I got married to a widow, she was pretty as can be. This widow had a grown-up daughter with a hair of red. My father fell in love with her, and soon the pair were wed. Here's the chorus. Oh, I'm my own grandpa. I'm my own grandpa. It seems funny, I know. It seems funny, I know. But it really is so, I'm my own grandpa. Well, this made my dad my son-in-law, and it changed my married life. My daughter was my mother, cause she was my father's wife. To complicate the matter, even though it brought me joy, I soon became the father of a bouncing baby boy. Oh, I'm my own Then became the brother-in-law to dad Who soon became my uncle Though it made me very sad For if he was my uncle Then he also was the brother To the widow's grown-up daughter Who was also my stepmother Oh, I'm my own grandpa Oh, sounds good I'm my own grandpa It seems funny, I know But it really is so I'm my father's wife then had a son which kept me on the run and soon became my brother cause he was my father's son my wife is now my mother's mother although it makes me blue cause every time I think of it she's my grandmother too oh I'm my Grandmother, I'm my own grandchild, and every time I think of it, it drives me nearly wild. For now, I have become the strangest case you ever saw. As husband to my grandmother, I'm my own grandpa. Last time, I'm my own grandpa. Everybody, I'm my own grandpa. It seems funny, I know, but it really is so. Good job. So, um, uh, 